Welcome for those that are here. Uh, welcome to our Spotlight on Stone webinar. We're going to take a few seconds here and let a few more people join. Um, so sit tight for a bit and we'll, uh, we'll start here in just a second. Thank you. All right, we're seeing some people come in right now. Feel free to chat as you're coming in. Let us know where you're from. Yeah, we'll wait just uh, another 15, 20 seconds or so, and then we'll get started. Okay, what do you think? Yeah, I think uh, we'll go ahead and get started here, folks. So uh, uh, thank you again. Uh, as I mentioned, this is Spotlight on Stone, the latest in Flow's webinar series. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to, to spend some time with us today and uh, talk and learn a little bit about stone uh, applications in the water jet industry. So um, we'd like this to be an, an interactive event. So we're going to present, obviously, and talk about some things, but uh, all the attendees will have an opportunity to, to really participate. You can see on the screen here, there's, uh, you know, icons for live chat, live polls, live Q&A. And those are things that we're all going to do. So there's a, a, a live chat function on the right-hand side of your screen. There's a, like a little voice bubble with the words chat. Uh, you can click that and you have the ability to, to ask a question or jump in and participate with us if there's something you'd like to see or learn about. Uh, we encourage you to do that. Uh, we'll also have live polls. So as we go along uh, during this presentation, uh, we'll stop on occasion and ask some questions about the work that you do or maybe things that you want to see in the, you know, in the water jet or stone and tile industry. And then we'll have some live Q&A as well, where uh, if you have questions, we can answer those. And some people have, have already submitted questions, and uh, we'll certainly address uh, those as time permits as well. Finally, uh, this on-demand access, uh, I'll just point out, let everybody know that uh, uh, this is recorded and will be available um, after after we present. So if you want to watch again or forward to somebody else in your organization, you'll have the chance to do that. So um, real quick, as we do introductions, before we do that, I was going to say, everybody, take a second maybe to, to do that chat. And Lance had said before, let us know where you're from. Uh, I see we have some people kind of from all over, right? Lance, I see oh, Central yeah. New York. Clint from Vancouver. Hi, Daniel from Minneapolis. Oh, we got Martin from Northern France. Yeah, all right. Uh, so kind of all over. So let's, uh, uh, that's great. Let's do some quick introductions. My name is Mike Snodgrass. Uh, I'm a regional business manager with Flow in the central part of the United States. I've been with Flow for about 25 years. So I've been around for a while and seen some changes in the, the industry, both the water jet industry and the stone and tile industry, and uh, appreciate the opportunity to, to present and work with you guys today. Uh, Lance? Hello, everyone. My name is Lance LaVert. I've been with Flow for about a little over five years now. I started off as an application specialist, and um, I did a lot of training with customers, specifically in the stone industry, being from California. It's a huge market over there. So looking forward to answering a lot of your questions. Um, now I'm based in Toronto and managing Eastern Canada. So hi from anyone that's in Canada. I know that one person's from Canada. So hi, Clint. Yeah, gosh, here, uh, let me jump in. Somebody from, uh, from India as well. That's great. Also on this, uh, this webinar with us is Tim Fabian. So if you were to ask a question uh, or something in the chat, Tim Fabian's there typing away and helping on that. Tim is a really a water jet, uh, he's like a water jet legend. He's been around water jet forever. Um, uh, here at Flow, he's responsible for our marketing department and our product development. So Tim's on board as well. And uh, I'd say let's challenge his typing skills, right? I encourage you to ask questions anytime you can. So, so um, in this slide, we're just gonna say some grand statement here before we get into specifics of the water. When you need to clean the water, the water jet. So essentially, what is a water jet? 
in a grand way, you can say it's kind of like the Grand Canyon, right? Awarja is using a supersonic erosion process. And the Grand Canyon, for thousands and thousands of years, eroded rock and stone with water. And that's what Awarja is. It's condensing all that power that what made the Grand Canyon into a nozzle. And um, we have the technology available today to make that happen. So Mike's going to jump in here, talk a little bit, a little bit more about the specs here. Yeah, yeah, I think the key word there, Lance, is power, right? Uh, as it says here, a water jet stream can reach a velocity of more than 3,200 feet per second, and we can cut to accuracies of one to two thousandths of an inch. So uh, 3,200 feet per second, right? We're, we're approaching about Mach 3, or about three times the speed of sound. So certainly a, a high-velocity stream, and when we put abrasive into that stream, it gives us the ability to cut anything. Um, and while it's particularly, it can cut anything, it's particularly well suited for cutting stone, both man-made and, uh, and natural stone materials. So that's what we're gonna focus on a lot today. Um, I think we'll start with a question, right? That uh, uh, This is a poll question, right, Lance? Well, I'm not sure if Lance is there. So, yeah, so sorry, we're starting off with the polling question here. What kind of stone do you find you are processing the most? So if you want to go ahead and interact with us here a little bit and um, just tell us what kind of stone you're looking to process. Is it granite, porcelain, a tile, marble? It looks like someone already voted for quartz. Or it's another material that's not listed here, such as decton or some type of exotic material. Yeah, and this should pop up on your screen, right, Lance? I mean, this should be on the right-hand side of uh, the participant screen. So it's it should be as easy as clicking one of those to uh, you know participate and give us an idea of what you're processing most. So interesting, we got someone that voted for marble, quartz, and uh, other, I'm assuming it's like, again, something that's just not listed here or decked on. <clears throat> yeah. Not surprising, right? Right, Lance, maybe what we kind of expect. Um, you know, there's a little bit for granite, whereas 10 years ago, Right, there would have been a lot more for granite and, and fewer of the others. So, um, and any perfect. Yeah. So, why a wire jet? If you're asking yourself, why should I consider a wire jet coming to my stone shop or what I'm trying to process? And the biggest ones is if you can dream it, you can cut it. It's a, it's a group, it's a good model because you can essentially cut anything with a wire jet. And the word you're going to probably hear a lot today is versatility or versatile. That's what a machine of a large can do is provide you a lot of versatility when it comes to your cut process. And yeah, I think we have a, yeah, sorry, Lance, I was going to say, I think we have a video here, right, to, to start off. And maybe a good thing to, to show right at the beginning is a water jet cutting a piece of stone. This happens to be a, a, a piece of man-made stone or artificial. It's a piece of deck tom. And uh, sped up a little bit for this uh, for this video here, but uh, right now it's doing a, a sink cutout, and then it's going to cut some faucet holes, and then do a perimeter cut of that sink as well. But you'll notice the jet has the ability to to pierce its own holes, so it can do that in just about any material. And we'll talk quite a bit about how it pierces its holes as we as we go on and talking. And it, you can see here now it's cutting a mango as well. Yeah, so it's going to do three minor cuts around the edges of the sink here, and then the back part of the sink is going to be a 2D cut. So it's showing you, again, the versatility of the wire jet, being able to cut the different parts of the sink, not just doing long linear cuts, but the sink holes and the sink itself um, without changing any of the tooling. And I think this could be really a, uh, while it's maybe a demo that we're showing here, it could be a practical part as well. We're going to talk later in the presentation about these angle or miter cuts that we can effectively do on water jets today, especially on uh, some of these thinner man-made materials uh, that gives us a really good, clean, chip-free edge. You're going to see that here as we wrap up. I think uh, it's going to stop cutting, and then we're going to pull that part out. And I wish we had a close up of it, but the edge quality of that sink, um, you can see a little bit at the end there is really, really good. Um, yeah, just great. FYI, again, feel free to ask questions in the chat. I see that Mario asked a question, is that one inch thick? And Tim was on it and he answered it right away. So if you have any questions, feel free to chat as we're going through this uh, webinar. Yeah, perfect. I think, uh, I think coming up next, we have a question that somebody had submitted uh, prior to or when they registered for the webinar. And that's Courtney. 
asked, how does stone cutting differ from sheet metal? And would you, would you consider either more difficult than the other? I think that's a pretty good question, right? Even though we're focusing on stone, uh, we'll talk later that I think even stone fabricators can cut metal for some certain application. So uh, how does it differ? You know, the nice thing is I don't think the cutting itself really is that different. Uh, a water jet's a pretty simple tool in that the, the properties of that jet stay the same regardless of the materials we cut. So the water pressure, the amount of abrasive, the amount of water that we put through the cutting head, that stays the same whether we're cutting a piece of sheet metal or we're cutting a piece of stone. Um, would I consider one more difficult than the other? I don't know that I would. I think that there might be a, uh, uh, an argument made that uh, we have to have different handling uh, of stone or glass or tile than we would of metal. Um, but other than that, I think uh, from a cutting standpoint, the same, they're the same. It's really more of a handling operation uh, where I think there's a bigger difference. Yeah, I'm adding on to that, Mike. The, uh, another big difference would be the piercing itself. Uh, stone is more of a brittle material than, uh, for example, a stainless steel piece or uh, aluminum. So when it comes to piercing, it's less forgiving on a stone than it is for metals. Um, you're more prone to chipping, to breakage of the stone versus um, a metal material. But working at Flow, we got some great advantages of what you can do to avoid that, whatever it's some programming tips to um, our patent technology, such as Ultra Pierce. We'll talk about that later on more in the webinar. That's gonna really um, help you as far as what's, um, how to prevent chipping and breakage in your stone versus cutting other materials like metal. Yeah, perfect. I think we have another video here, right? Where um, uh, it's gonna show a bunch of different stuff from programming, a layout of a, a countertop or a kitchen layout. Um, and a flow water jet, and then ultimately it's going to show uh, some cutting of it as well. But this highlights some of the things we're going to talk about as we go on. That's positioning or fixturing of a part. Uh, I had already mentioned the ability to pierce uh, and cut an angle. So those are things we'll all, that are shown here, but we'll talk as well as we go on. Ultra pierce, Lance had just touched on that. We're going to talk about that a little bit later, but ultra pierce is a patented uh, uh, flow technology that allows us to actively, or actively, I'm seeing the screen, uh, to effectively uh, pierce uh, laminate and brittle materials. So we'll talk more about that later as well. And it also showed uh, active tolerance or taper control, and we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, as we go as well. So let's move on and talk maybe about some of the benefits of water jet cutting, right? What, uh, what are the benefits if we go to water jet versus other processes? Uh, the first is there's really very little lateral force uh, on that part when we're cutting. And so because of that, we can eliminate the need for any type of elaborate or expensive fixturing on the part. So we're only putting a pound or two of lateral force uh, exerted by that jet when we're cutting. So you'll notice in all these videos that we're gonna play, uh, the stone or the part is typically just set on the table and there's no need to, to fixture or hold that down. Uh, second, there's virtually no chipping on the edge, even on thin materials. That first video that we saw, uh, as Lance said, it was a piece of decton, and you, it was hard because we weren't really zoomed in, but, but boy, that's an edge you can come off of that part, and it's an edge that's ready to be glued right after cutting. So it's an effective way of cutting a lot of these newer, thinner materials that oftentimes when you're cutting with a saw, uh, you can get some, some chipping, and we eliminate that with a water jet. And finally, uh, no direct contact with the cutting head. So the benefit there, I think, could be twofold. One, we've eliminated any potential for scratching or damaging our material. Uh, but two, we've taken away the chance or the possibility of that head to contact the material or move the part uh, while we're cutting as well. So um, I think the next slide, right, we have the, the same some benefits, but really these are more focused on the production and efficiency side of water jet. Um, I don't know if you want to take these lines. Yeah, sure, Mike. So one tool for all holes and profiles, little or no after finish required. So really, it's just saying, again, based on that sink video we saw, that first one, you're not happy to change your toolings in between the type of cuts you're trying to accomplish. And there's no finishing really required if you're gluing those edges or the miter edges. Uh, number two here, single pass cutting for most materials, right? A wire jet is a cut through process. It doesn't do multi passes. So when it comes to speeds of the cuts and efficiency of one cut through process cutting, there's a big advantage in that. Uh, the bullet point three here, low upper operating cost with long cutting nozzle life and light flexible tooling. I, I would take that as more, there's no direct tooling. So you're 
um, expectancy of the tooling is going to last longer than if you were doing direct tool cutting, such as with the saw, right? If the saw is doing the direct contact on a stone versus a wire jet, which there isn't contact, there's advantage in that. And finally, net or near net cutting reduces need for hand finishing. A wire jet is a very accurate tool. Whatever you are programming, it will cut on that line, so there will be minimal waste as far as the material between the cuts of um, slabs and your front miners. Um, Seems like we got some more questions coming yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that, Lance. Right. The, no, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I was going to say Mario had asked a question that Tim answered, but maybe it's appropriate with the picture of the cutting head here. He had asked, "Is there a different cutting head required when cutting stone versus a different material?" And as as Tim had answered, "No, there's not." Right. So uh, all these machines that we're going to talk about today, or any of the applications, they all require or utilize the same cutting head. Yeah. And. Okay. and Answer Real quick on that, let me add one more thing, right? The, oh, sure. the question after that was, is there a different head for, for metal or stone? And obviously the same thing, no. It's the same head uh, for any material that we've cut. Very good questions. And if anyone's joining late, we welcome you to this webinar that we're doing. Um, I'm Lance and this is Mike. So uh, we welcome if anyone was a latecomer. Our next question is from Jason. How fast can wire jets cut through stone? So there's a little bit of var variables involved in this answering this. Um, number one, it's going to dictate on the type of machine you have and your stone application. So the type of machine, we offer machine pumps that rate from 60,000 PSI to 94,000 PSI. And there's going to be different speeds involved as far as what you're um, trying to accomplish as far as um, um, the amount of pressure you're going to do versus um, um, Sorry, I'm losing my throwing draw. Um, as far as the higher pressure, you can attain higher speeds. Number two would be the edge quality, right, of your stone application. Are you trying to have a finer finish your edge quality versus a rougher one? The thickness of your material, is it a one to two to three CM stone, or is it a thicker going up to one inch or two inch? And then number three is your material type. Is it a softer material to a harder material? So with all those variables in mind, the typical range you see in the stone industry is between 10 to 50 inches per minute. And um, that's going to be about what you're going to see in speeds. I don't know if Mike has anything to add to that. Yeah, no, the only thing I'll add to that, Lance, is that I think uh, it's worth pointing out as well that on a water jet, you can change the speed of the cut um, on, on one part. So if I was doing a, you know, one of those videos, the first video we saw of a sink cut out, uh, if the back of that, maybe it was gonna have a backsplash or wasn't critical, I can have that part of the geometry cut faster and I can slow down on the other part. So it's not really addressing the exact speed of the cut, but I think it's worth pointing out that by a simple click of a button on the control, you can change the speed uh, you know, on, on a part that you're cutting. So common stone applications, um, we have a few bullet points here. The, the majority um, of you are most likely looking for um, architectural or kitchen or bathroom applications such as um, kitchen and bathroom design, countertops, vanities, etc. But again, this is showing the versatility of a wire jet because you're able to cut more intricate shapes and geometrical shapes, you're able to do mosaics and inlays. And I have a customer I work with that's in, based in Colorado where they have three wire jets and all they cut is inlays and mosaics and very high-end pieces. Uh, for homes that are placed like in the center foyer of um, your entryway in your, in your house. So going from very, very high-end intricate cuts to um, more standard countertops, a wire jet offers a lot. And when it comes to different um, applications as furniture, fireplaces, stairwells, as, well, as much as those can be in stone, there's different types of stones, right? There's bricks that are involved in probably the fireplace, the furniture can involve wood, and you're able to do all of those applications with the wire jet. And I don't yeah, know so, I don't yeah. no, I don't have much to add to that. I think maybe the kitchen and bathroom, right? That's probably the most popular one uh, in, in most cases, right? And I think we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more on the next slide as well, where uh, I think that's where most of the application, uh, you know, comes from or what we see. Uh, actually, I will go back. I'll have one thing I can add to that previous slide, if you can go back. Um, you know, we're talking a lot about stone, but we've had questions about metal, and I touched on the difference in cutting metal versus stone. We've seen a lot of instances where, um, where stone fabricators are cutting metal, uh, whether it's for an inlay, you could have a mosaic like you have here that maybe has some, some metal, a stainless steel, or a, 
or a brass inlay, and you can effectively use the water jet to cut that. I've seen instances as well where maybe people are doing a terrazzo floor and use their water jet. Well, they don't use that for the terrazzo necessarily. They could use that to cut something to put in the floor uh, when they do the terrazzo application. So um, I say we're going to focus a lot, I think, on kitchen and bathrooms, but the artistic right. stuff, I think, really, uh, there's a place for it with the water jet. We'll talk again about the versatility of this, uh, the water jet tool, and you can do an awful lot with it. So uh, right back to this one, the, right in the kitchen and bath space, this is kind of a new concept or something that's new in the industry, the waterfall concept. So what we have here is a stone material that drops vertically from the sides to create a flow all the way to the floor. So just about every video we've watched so far has an angled cut, probably a 45 degree angle. And that's typical of what would be used in this application here where we would angle cut both the top and these side pieces and they're then glued together. And it gives the appearance of one solid piece of stone um, all the way and can have the effect of a thicker piece of stone as well. So I know, you know, kind of back in the day, maybe Lance, you saw some of this where the industry has changed and gone to more of this than the thicker stone. Is that correct? Yes. When, yeah. I, worked, when I worked, they would tell me a lot about how they used to process more granites and also the edges were different. They were called bull nose rounded edges. Whereas today's trend is now lighter stone or white which is marble or and the edges are now squared or they're mitered and sandwiched in. So the water jet in a way is filling a void of this cutting process that now is changing because of the miter or edge, which a water jet does really well. And um, it used to be a two cut process for stone companies where they had to do the garnet or sorry, the granite with formal edges and using a different finishing machine. Now they're able to do the whole countertop or sink or um, backsplash all with the water jet in one cut process. Uh, quick question before, this is another poll question. Before we get to that, I'll uh, touch again. I think Mario had asked a question again about, uh, hey, when I switch from, you know, I've got one machine that can cut stone and steel. What switch do I have to make to do that? The nice thing is, and Tim had answered this in the chat room, but uh, the only thing you have to do is change the material uh, in the database that's provide on our, provided on our machine. So again, no change to the setup of the machine. Your your water pressure and your abrasive flow all stays the same. You would simply go into the control and, uh, and select a different material. And that then would change the speed of the cut, either faster or slower, depending on what material change you make. Okay. So our poll uh, question here is what types of stone applications do you cut the most? And our options for you to click are countertops, floors, artistic application, other architectural elements or signs. I'm not surprised by it, but it seems like the majority of you are going towards countertops. Um, and that's what I see a lot too when I work with customers on, in the field. Just give you a few more seconds to answer this. Yeah, yeah, virtually nothing on floors. Artistic there and architectural, right? Architectural is pretty broad definition, but uh, that's right up there too. I guess we're not surprised we would have assumed countertops would be the, the top one as well. So, all right, should we, uh, we move on here? So here, here's a question, maybe a pretty common one, right? Uh, saws are often used for cutting stone. Why should we consider using something different? Um, and generally speaking, the harder something is to process with traditional methods, like the saw, the better it is for a water jet. Um, what does that mean, right? Why is that the case? Well, I, I think there's a bunch of reasons for it, right? The one, the ability that we can cut any materials and just about any thickness, but we also have the ability to cut any shapes, right? We had talked at the beginning about the, uh, the thin kerf or the thin width of that jet. It allows us to do some intricate designs and uh, some radius geometries that we can't do with the, with the traditional method. Um, but it also allows us, as I say, to move uh, in different directions, which we'll talk about, I think, being one of the, the biggest advantages. Yes, and, and, and essentially a water jet can replace your saw, for example, in your shop. But what I see most of the time is if you have the allocated floor spaces that you have your long linear saw to do long linear cuts or your, your bridge saw, and then really your water jet is more for the intricate cuts and shapes that you need to accomplish. Or if you're doing smaller um, countertops or sinks or vanities, 
you would prefer a wire jet, especially if you're doing different types of materials that you, you haven't ever really thought about cutting before. Um, being in California, a big one for vanities and smaller bathroom sinks is a porcelain. But porcelain is a very hard material to cut. Um, but with our technology, as far as the ultra peers and the intricacy of our um, of our programming, you can be able to do a vanity of, out of porcelain, which um, was very hard to accomplish um, a few years ago. Yeah, and you know. Go ahead, Dan, Mike. Yeah, no, I was going to add too that uh, you know another nice part when we talked about the the omnidirectional cutting, right? I've seen where with today's templating methods and the digital templating, it's not uncommon where if I'm doing a countertop against the wall, that the wall isn't perfectly straight. And uh, with a water jet, it allows us to cut that whole part and follow the contour of that wall, which can eliminate the, the typical secondary operation that's on site where you're grinding or fabricating that stone or, or knocking out drywall to try and get that counter to fit flush. Right, and uh, especially if you're just a wholesaler selling countertops or you're part of the installation to make it easier on your uh, installation teams on site and job sites, um, having a countertop ready to go on that wall without manual labor and grinding it down to make it fit is very, very crucial. So um, that was another feedback I get from customers working in the field. And what it comes to another advantage is your inside corners. So with the wire jet, you're just going to be more accurate than a saw. And when it comes to even the combo jets that we've seen, where there's a saw with a wire jet head attached, a wire jet such as our machines is going to be superior in your accuracies in those corners and your circular corners with your radiuses. Uh, I think next year we're going to have a video. Yeah, so a lot of these videos are, are pretty similar in a sense, right? That uh, we're primarily showing some angled cutting. So here we have a uh, piece of stone that looks like three quarter inch, one inch, uh, where we're doing a bevel cut. This almost looks like a, like a tabletop or a lazy Susan with a bevel. I think that'll loop through again. You can see we're doing the bevel cut first around the perimeter. Uh, and then we come back and we do uh, the perpendicular cut um, to have the finished part. We have an earlier question. Someone asked about density. Why why can you cut faster on stone than steel? And it um, looks like Tim already answered that about density of the stone, which is true, right, Mike? You can cut essentially faster on stone than a, you know stainless steel 304, 316 because of density of your material type. And we have those material types listed in our programming. Yeah, our ability to cut, right, you have to keep in mind that the, the water jet is really, as Lance said at the beginning, it's a it's an erosion process. So um, its ability to cut a material really depends on how hard or dense that material is. Um, and sometimes it's a little bit misleading, right? We're talking about uh, stones, but in the metal industry, people view titanium as this super metal. But we cut titanium pretty fast, actually, because of its erosive uh, properties and the same applies in stone where there are certain stones uh, that cut really well and cut really fast with water jet actually we got another question just came in again sorry for like jumping in the chat but yeah. question one of them is asking about customer established cutting rubber plate beading ceramic pieces this is a huge requirement for defense application i actually work with one of these defense uh, contractors in arizona that does a lot of um, proprietary ceramic plating and it's layered so a wire does really well on that because there's different types of materials in those layers and a wire can essentially cut through all those material types, whereas other machines or routers couldn't. So um, Baron's bringing some really interesting points about ceramic pieces, which I didn't really think about um, when we were doing this stone uh, webinar. Yeah, nice. Okay, here, uh, advantage with water jet cutting. I think this is uh, really just kind of a recap of a lot of the things that we've looked at, right? The, some of the benefits we reduce material waste and production costs well uh, we talk about the thin stream our, our ability to keep parts close together and maximize uh, the parts that we can get out of a slab of material um, and, and our production costs right if we don't have to handle that material or don't have to use don't have to handle it as often or don't have to use as much material uh, we can dramatically reduce our work and process time for our fabricators bunch of ways for that too whether it's uh, by being able to do that angle cut on one machine or maybe cut uh, the back end of a countertop to fit the contour of a wall. A lot of different ways that we can uh, be more efficient that way. No change in tooling, we keep talking about that. 
uh, that it's super easy to lay a, a slab of material and begin cutting. Uh, we can pierce our own starter hole. That's nice. We've seen that on all these videos. In a few slides down the road here, we're going to talk about specifically uh, that ultra pierce, how that works and why it's so effective for us. Um, save valuable time and money with no fixturing and minimal curve, right? I keep talking about that, how thin the, the stream is and the benefits of that allowing us to get in and do tight geometry and just do some things that we can't do either with, a, obviously with a saw or even with the CNC router as well. So Mike just looks at a bunch of advantages with the Warjet, right? Tons of them. And if I were you and you don't know much about Warjets, I would think, oh my gosh, is this a really uh, complicated machine to operate? And I, the answer simply is no, it's not. And when I first joined Flow five years ago, in one week, you know, I was able to run a Warjet, do the programming. Um, it's a very seamless process once you bring a Warjet machine into your shop. And when it comes to, um, even when you have current operators operating a five axis saw or a simpler stone machine in your shop, I notice when I train customers that they have a easier time to going from that machine to a large and they tell me after a few weeks of operating it that they enjoy operating these machines more. So when it comes to our technology, there's a lot of advantages and it doesn't mean there's more complication to it. Yeah, Lance, I'll add to right, the easy to operate part, but if just, I've seen a lot where uh, it's super easy for your operator, right? You, as I said before, you can program on the machine, but most of the time the program is, programming is done offline and is then sent to the machine. So for your operator, it's as simply as selecting the material from our drop-down window, uh, putting in the thickness of the material, and select the edge quality. So three clicks of a button, it really is pretty easy to operate. Uh, we have a slogan that we used to use in the past, trained in a day, proficient in a week. And I think that that's applicable here, where um, it, it's an easy technology to learn. Uh, again, the keys are the, the properties of that jet stay the same all the time. Uh, and it's the software that, that we've developed over the years that really takes all of the guesswork out of how fast we're going to cut. And the software does that all for us. And another thing is just showing the levels of flow. When it comes to training, we have trainers such as myself that can come in person. We have uh, our technology center in Seattle where if you want to do in-person training, or we have online training, which we really expanded in the last year and a half due to these COVID times where it really tried to make it a seamless process for our customers, you know, purchasing a machine, inquiring machine, installing machine to training and cutting on the machine. We, we you know, we, we value partnering with you with this technology. So our next question we have, I believe this is a polling question. What kinds of stone applications would you like to be able to cut to increase demand? So if you were to acquire a wardjet or a, another uh, means of getting a larger technology, what stone application are you looking to maybe expand to or want to do um, in your current operations? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Question or answers here. It looks like someone yeah. put yours. So we have countertops, floors, uh, an artistic application, architectural elements, signs, or any others. And signs is actually a big one. Uh, it's really big in the fabrication world, but I noticed in stone. Um, people love to have a very nice, intricate stone sign. Um, so those, um, I see an increase of demand as well. Yeah. And we, before we move on, if we just kind of recap, I, I'm not sure if the attendees can see uh, the results here, but countertops, floors, and architectural elements, pretty much the same, all pretty tied um, with artistic and signage uh, being kind of second, nothing for other. So, Again, maybe not surprised by that, right? Uh, uh, architectural elements was high on one of the other pools as well. And someone in the chat wrote fountains, which is uh, interesting. Actually, there is a company um, by Burbank, California here that does fountains. So um, that's another good point, Jennifer. You can get into fountains and doing tiles or any other stone type to do fountains. Okay, next question. Okay, I'll keep this one. So this is from Joe. What's the latest technology on mitering and piercing for 
drilling hard quartzites and porcelain slab materials. And right, quartzites and porcelain is a very brittle material that's prone to chipping. So the two advantages that we have at, at here at Flow is going to be in your programming and then in our pack technology. So our programming would be some tips as far as your lead-ins, lead-outs, but also what we call vertical piercing. So if you're looking to miter and do your pierce of your miter, it's more recommended to start in your lead-in as a vertical pierce and then shifting into a miter or um, a different bevel degree cut. And this is very attainable and easy to do in Flow Expert, which I train customers to do. The second advantage is the piercing is with our patent technology called Ultra Pierce, which I think Mike's gonna talk in just a second. And Ultra Pierce, I don't know if you can all see this, I'm gonna expand myself here, make my thumbnail, but so this is our wire jet head here, and you can see there's two nipples. And we have a wire jet head and other companies, they only have one nipple, and that's because we do what we call vacuum assist, which Mike's gonna expand here, I think, in the next slide. And um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Lance. So this this picture here, right? We're going to talk about ultra pierce. Boy, we've said that a lot during this presentation, right? And that, uh, as it says, that allows us to have reliable piercing of brittle laminated materials such as marble, stone, glass, and composite. So how do we pierce? Right? I think that's a fair question. How do we start our own hole? So this diagram shows a, a typical cutting head, and this is the same cutting head that we would have, whether it's a uh, a two axis, just an X and Y machine, or a five axis head. If we had five axis, we would have the same head. It would just be held by a multi axis uh, wrist. So, how this head works, we have at the top where you can see a, a, a little droplet, like a teardrop, that's where the water comes into the cutting head. It's already pressurized at this point. So, typically, either it's 60,000 or 94,000 psi. The water starts to go through the cutting head, and at this first inlet or nipple or angled port that Lance had referenced, that's where we're going to put abrasive into that cutting head. The water and the abrasive mix together, and then they exit at the bottom of that cutting head through a mixing tube, um, and then we do our cutting. When we pierce, however, the water is going to turn on first for just a second before we put abrasive into that water stream. So that's on a typical pierce. The problem with that can be when I'm piercing a a, a brittle or a fragile or a laminate material like we're talking about today, that split second where that water comes down where it doesn't have abrasive in it, it's not really doing effective cutting at that point, and it can have a tendency to break or try and chip that material. So years ago, Flo had patented our, our Ultra Pierce, and what that is is a device that actually goes on the other side of that cutting head or on that other angled port, and we call it an ultra pierce vacuum assist. So what that does is automatically, this is done through the control, it starts the flow of abrasive prior to the water turning on, and it'll come in the one port and gets vacuumed out the other port. That way, when we do turn the cutting head on, the very first drop of water that, that comes out of that cutting head is an effective cutting tool, right? And, and I can effectively cut then in my stone or glass or tile without breaking it. And the force of the, the velocity or the venturi of that jet will stop the abrasive from being sucked out the other side. So there's a neat thing in our software as well that uh, it's called pierce all holes first. So when I have this ultra pierce, um, I think Lance had a part yeah, before with sure. a whole bunch of holes. Right. Yeah. So yeah, to show you here, you can see this is a quarter inch marble piece, but the, the holes that you're attain, able to attain on ultra pierce is going to be a lot superior than if you were trying to do this on other means of or another wire jet. And um, this ultra pierce technology is what's able to attain this piece. Or if you were cutting in thousands of these, there would be way less prone of chipping and breaking with ultra pierce than if you were trying to do this with not vacuum assist um, wire jet head. Right. And Lance, in that example that you have, right, we could use a pierce all holes first function where the machine would go and pierce all those starter holes uh, and then go back to, to do all the finished cutting, correct? Yes. So we, we've, we've mentioned uh, this ultra pierce uh, a bunch of times and I think it's a, it's a pretty uh, critical part of doing effective stone cutting. So uh, what about machines? Right? Maybe we should talk about machines. We've done a lot, watched a lot of videos and a lot of talking about different applications. Um, 
Flow as a manufacturer makes a number of different machines, right? We have what we call our Mach series, and we have different machine series, a Mach 100, Mach 200, Mach 300, Mach 500, Mach 700. So a, a broad line of machines, and all of those are available in different sizes and configurations, and any of those machines would be effective um, you know, for cutting the materials we're talking about today. However, in the stone industry, it seems like two machine platforms have really become the most popular as of late. Uh, and there are our Mach 200 and our Mach 500 series. So uh, before I, I'm going to touch on the Mach 200. Before I do, though, uh, Mario just asked a question uh, relating to Ultra Pierce. And so I'll, since that's fresh in our mind here, let me let me jump on that real quick. His question is, does Ultra Pierce uh, work for different materials? And the answer is, yes, it does. You know, typically we're not going to use that Ultra Pierce for, for a metal, right? There's no need to do that because that first hit of water uh, isn't going to damage the metal. But whether it's a, a stone or a tile or a laminated material, like we had talked before about something sandwiched together, whether it was a, a phenolic or a carbon fiber, anything that has laminated or glued materials, uh, glass, I'm not sure if I mentioned glass. Uh, so yes, the, that vacuum sister ultra pairs can be used on, uh, can, can be put on any machine and uh, um, can be used for a variety of different materials as well. Yeah, actually, I got something on my desk that I helped a customer with a couple of weeks ago, but this is a G10 portable um, material polyester with layers of plastic. And this was only, again, uh, attainable to be able to get this finished part through Ultra Pierce. When you try to do it without Ultra Pierce, there will be delamination happening. So not only is it helpful as far as stone to prevent brittle and breaks and chipping, but when it comes to layer materials, um, it prevents delamination. So Ultra Pierce is very helpful in that. Yeah, good. So, all right, well, we'll get back to machines, maybe uh, uh, right, look at some machine stuff. So I started to talk about the Mach 200, uh, right? I, I don't know if I had said, but this is a machine that's available in four sizes. And it's one designed to be a practical and flexible uh, water jet solution. It's available in machines as small as four foot by four foot, uh, we make it six and a half by 10. These are cutting envelopes, six and a half by 13. And one that's uh, actually six by 24, that larger system is often used as almost like a dual zone where you can put one slab on one side um, and cut that while you're processing or loading and unloading on the other side. So um, this, is a, this is a great machine that's easy to load uh, and it's easy to access, which gives you accessibility to the left, the front and the right sides of the machine. So, um, a great versatile machine in this industry. It's also available with our Pivot Plus uh, five axis head. So this has been in a lot of the videos that we've watched so far. Uh, it allows us to do angled cuts up to 60 degrees. Uh, in addition to that, it also has taper control. I think at the beginning we had talked about um, right, the water jet stream, how it can sometimes give a little bit of a taper on one edge of the part. And this five axis head is not only uh, programmable to do angles like we've seen, but it also will automatically tilt to adjust that taper, put the taper onto a scrap part so that our finished part has a good, uh, clean perpendicular edge to it. I think our next slide we're going to see a, uh, right, we've seen this head before, but this is just a quick video uh, of that Pivot Plus cutting head doing some angled cutting. Uh, it also has that Ultra Pierce Mac Assist option shown on it. But uh, so, so that's a quick video on the 200. The other machine that I think is really you know, popular in the stone and tile is the Mach 500 line. And uh, Lance, I don't know, you wanna, you wanna run through this one? I will, and just I wanna jump in again and chat because this is interesting. Baron asked, many cases G10 needs physical drilling. Does it depend on grades of G10? So Baron, just a FYI, I actually helped this customer acquire a flow wire jet from us specifically because of Ultra Pierce. So that speaks volumes of why Ultra Pierce as a feature is so important because they actually had a wire jet there and they were doing pre-drilling before water jetting. So they had to pre-drill and then start their Pierce cut line in that pre-drilled hole and then do their cut line. And what that did was instead of it being a one cut process, it was now a two cut process. So um, yes, in typical cases, B10 does need drilling, but with Ultra Pierce, um, it was able to pierce with water. So it, um, good point to bring that up, Aaron. Um, so for the Mach 500, 
this is one of my favorite machines. This is our flagship machine. Um, I have it actually hung up in my office here. Um, this is our workhorse of the Wirejet. Um, there's three really big distinct advantages you can compare it to compared to the Mach 200 that uh, Mike just uh, mentioned. Besides the obvious, obvious, obvious design, such as it's a gantry design versus a cantilever, the big advantage is that this machine is available in the 94,000 PSA pump, whereas the 200 is limited to the 60,000 PSI pump. Um, I'd like to get more into those details today, but we're going to be a little bit short on time. So I'm just going to jump into the next advantage of the which is the configurations, the tables to the added on features and attachments. And the availability of these machines is a lot more than the 200. Um, from a five foot by five foot to a 13 foot by 24 foot, this machine is very customizable to your solution needs. Uh, um, that's why the Mark 500 again is our flagship machine. It has a lot of customizable options in it. The third distinct feature is that you can have two heads. So if your demands for production and um, uh, is really, really high, you have the capabilities to put two heads on this gantry drive system rather than one. So those are the big advantages. And then with the head that's attached to this machine is what we call a dynamic XD head. So it has a lot of the capabilities of what the Pivot Plus is. The difference you can say is that it has more of a robust design and that design just matches what the Mach 500 is where at the Pivot Plus was designed for the Mach 200. And I'm not sure if Mike wants to add any on to those. Yeah, um, nope, yeah. I think that's good. It, uh... Right for this industry, right? I think they both do the same thing and uh, allow us to do a lot of the the new things that we're seeing in the stone industry today. So I'll take this, Mike. So the next question is: What are some tips on lead ins and lead outs when cutting stone? So the programmable tips I can give is that when you're doing, for example, holes such as sinkholes, it's advisable to do your lead ins and lead outs with a circular radius coming in and out versus a vertical cut line into your circle. So that would be helpful. Uh, number two, again, would be if you are doing mitering or any bevel cutting, to start with a vertical pierce first and then change into your miter cut. And when it comes to ultra pierce, that actually helps a lot, especially with your lead-ins, because that's lead-ins are the more crucial pierce of your, um, of your cut due to the prone of chipping and breakage of the stone. So Ultra Pierce helps minimize that. Um, and again, when you do our classes or you're trained with me in person or any of our representatives, we really um, are involved as, as far as maximizing your efficiency and um, success rate of cutting your lead-ins and lead-outs in your stones. Yeah, here I'll take this one, Lance. Uh, some cool things we've seen cut, maybe a little bit of fun stuff here, right? The uh, We've seen a lot of countertops and uh, in our polls, people pick artistic stuff. So here's just some some examples of that. Right in the upper left, uh, this, this is a marble part. And I think it's kind of neat, right, when you look at that. It shows a lot of the advantages here. One, we're just talking about the ability to, to do lead and lead outs and pierce holes, right? So th this shows on the interior cuts, right, that, uh, that that was done and able to produce a really clean part. Uh, the inside geometry, again, something you typically can't do with a router or, uh, or by hand. So that's a neat part. The one in the upper right, that's uh, the skyline of Chicago. I said, I think that this is uh, this was made with a bunch of different stone and different tiles. And I believe, I'm not positive, but I think I've seen this in McCormick Place. Uh, maybe some of you have seen it, I think, when you're coming from the from one building to the next down the escalators. And that's really large. To If, if that's the same one, that, that's probably you know, 15 feet wide or so, at least. So uh, some neat things you can do there. And the two on the bottom, again, just uh, I, I think shows the detail work that you can do with the small curve, the inside radius, uh, tight geometry that you can do with a water jet on, on both tile and uh, like a marble or, or man-made marble there. So uh, the, the next slide, I think, shows some of the same thing, right? Cut intricate designs at high speed without breaking, right? These are... Uh, you know, just kind of fun trinkets that we've cut, but um, they they again show a lot of the things we've talked about, minimal curve, tight radiuses, and uh, really shows some of the ideas, right, for designers and some of the things that you can do with. Very easy, typically, uh, to be able to go from art to part, right, where you can sometimes scan a geometry like this uh, to create a DXF and just go right to cutting on the water jet. 
Um, so here, maybe this is a, a, another one follow up to that, right? Some of the neat things we do can easily cut sink and faucets, but this is more of a typical kitchen. And uh, maybe Lance, you can talk about some of the things that are done in a kitchen like this with a water jet. Yeah, you can see here, I, I took a picture of my kitchen. I'm just kidding, but I wish this was my kitchen. This is, a, this is a good showcase of what's the current trend today, right? This looks like a very modern kitchen in 2021. Um, marble countertops, a full backsplash behind the uh, oven stone top there. That, that is the end right now. And 20 years ago, it was a granite thick countertop, three to four CMs with bull nose edging. And today, the cut process is requiring a lot of miters to do those flat square edges, uh, waterfall concepts. Um, so with a water jet, it, there's a huge as far not only the material types have changed from granite to marble, quartz, and deck dawn, which is very, very hard to cut, to also the actual edging. And you can accomplish this whole kitchen on a water jet versus maybe having two to three stone machines to um, finish the same cut process. So it's just, this is a perfect showcase of that. And it's a good looking kitchen. It is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I think we have another question here. I'll take this one, Lance. Uh, Jesus asked, what is the cost of water jet technology? Um, kind of a broad question. I guess I'm not sure, Jesus, if, uh, if you meant what is the cost to purchase a water jet cutting machine or what is the cost to run a water jet machine? So uh, maybe I'll answer both of them. So uh, the cost of the water jet technology to buy a machine, as we had said before, Flow makes a pretty broad range of machines in different sizes from small to really large. And so we can have a full range and as low as just under $100,000 to $500,000 plus. But typically, for uh, the applications we're talking about here today, um, we're gonna be looking at machine prices in the range of 150 dollars to $250,000. Um, I think that's a pretty good range for a lot of the technology we've been looking at today, we're talking about today. Is term, in terms of cost of operation, Again, there's some variables there um, where it depends on the, the pump for number of cutting heads and those kind of things. But, but I think it's safe to give just an hourly operating cost of about $25 to $30, uh, depending on the setup of your machine. And that cost is gonna include uh, things like your power to run the machine, the water, uh, your consumable parts like the cutting tips and parts for your pump, and also the abrasive that we use. Um, running the machine as well. So again, some variables there, but hopefully that helps to answer a question a little bit about uh, about what these machines cost. Um, Mike, I'm gonna back up here a little bit. Baron asked in the chat, we see very few 3D cutting and hence use of dynamic XDs very little. If you share one example of 3D stone cutting on stone for decor use. So I'm gonna just go back to what I showed in that kitchen, Baron. So see the front parts of that stone, um, Usually if there's more of a lip to that or that backwash there, the backwash to the stone at the edge there. Um, that's where you're going to have that needed basis for a miter cut. Um, the waterfall concept, Tim brought that up again in the chat. That's a good example of that. Um, miter edges are, it's the huge thing now that um, a lot of stone shops I see here in California and across the U.S., that really is is in a needed basis. So that's where your larger 3D cutting is coming from. It's a simple 45 degree miter cut. Um, can you do more intricate 3D cutting? Yes, um, it, it has that capability, and we've seen that. Um, it's just on it. That's more on a needed basis. Or if you're doing some other cutting application, that's more in the artistic realm. So, understand. Um, so this is, again, we're kind of going towards the end of this presentation, but just a summary here. A flow water jet offers the flexibility to take on new work, improve productivity, and capitalize on opportunities now and the future. And like I touched up on in the kitchen um, example, you can see that with the growing trends in end markets and uh, industries, a water jet, even though it was still in stone shops 20 years ago, it's more essential now and probably in the future because of the versatility of a water jet, you're able to do so much more. And as your demands and marketplaces change, the water jet can adapt with you because it's such a versatile machine. Yeah, I agree. So like Lance said, we're kind of wrapping up here. We just have a, a couple of minutes left. So what other questions can we answer? So. I would say here, here's a good chance, right? If you have some questions, get them here in the chat, whether 
we can answer them now or Tim can answer. If you have a question that you ask there that we don't get to today, uh, we'll certainly reach out to you afterwards and make sure that we get your questions answered. Um, uh, you know, I think we'll, we're certainly going to follow up with everybody, but uh, um, Lance can touch here, right? Maybe a test cut is something we can do for you as well. Cuts, um, if you have exotic materials or man-made materials such as Decton to um, uh, more natural stones to the more common stones, such as marble and quartz, we always welcome you sending your test cuts to us. And um, after this presentation, we're going to send you a follow-up email as, worth, as well as more information about how to send your test cuts. And again, we want to really work with you in your research phase of the jet so you can understand what your cut speeds are and the edge qualities. And um, I don't know if Mike wants to add more on to that. Yeah, no, I think uh, right then, you know, what we're saying here at the end, right, we're, uh, we're here to try and help. So after this, if we have the opportunity to help you, whether it's a meet in person, I think that uh, Joe had a question about how easy is it is to, how easy is it to program a miter edge? Those are things that we can uh, certainly help you with afterwards. Um, and then finally, uh, uh, kind of a wrap up I, for those of you that stuck uh, stuck it out with me and Lance here for the last hour, right? There's a little bonus maybe at the end where for a limited time, uh, for people that purchase a Mach 200 or a Mach 500, regardless of the size, uh, there's a no cost upgrade to the five axis head. So on the Mach 200, that would be the Pivot Plus. And on the Mach 500, that would be the Dynamic XD. So, um, you know, I think that's, uh, if you were on the fence before, and now you shouldn't really be on the fence, right? We're giving you a reason to, to maybe add a water jet. So, um, uh, again, I think we're just about done here, but we'd encourage you at this point, right, if you have more questions, you can reach out. We're going to have our, our contact info here at the end where uh, there's a phone number you can reach out to Flo. If you do have any other questions, uh, email here from Marie in our marketing department where, uh, uh, she can help take your information as well. And, uh, and I think that's about it. I'm just looking to see if we have any other uh, questions real quick. I don't think we do. So uh, at that, maybe I'll wrap up. I thank everybody, uh, both Lance and I and Tim. I uh, appreciate you guys taking the time uh, or the time spending an hour with us today. We appreciate it and uh, look forward to hopefully having the chance to work with you in the future. Thank you all.